Today we're talking about the fashion industry. I want to talk about fashion. I want to talk about style. I want to talk about why it's important to me. And I want to talk about ways that everybody should be able to access fashion. And a little bit about the gender dysphoria that fashion does give me. Um, so let's stick around and have some fun today. Understand Cause she's so free from the man Cause that girl does what no one can That's Frank She's the type of girl that you love to detest But when the one those feelings you choose to repress She's so beautiful I don't know how to address Let's call her What's up, friends? What's up, friends? Why is this all so close to me? Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to a fun and exciting topic that I'm just spitting all over the place. I just like chug the water. Um, I just want to talk about something that I think brings me a lot of joy and is a maybe um, whatever. It's a lot of things. It's very complex and it's also one of the, what is it, the second highest um, grossing industry in the world um, behind oil. Uh, maybe like the biggest source of uh, generational trauma. Um, it, I'm like, I know, I'm really selling it. It's, uh, it's a big source of gender dysphoria, um, racial, injustice and misrepresentation issues. Um, it takes advantage of every and every single one of us. Um, and it really touches and affects all of our lives, regardless of what you want to believe about it or not. Um, everyone's touched by fashion. So fashion. Okay. So I obviously I sold it with the intro. I think the when I, when I talk about the negativity of fashion, I'm not talking about... So, okay, fashion's like multifaceted. So, I like to think about fashion... I'll talk about the positive sides of it that I, I like first. And then we can like talk about the, the ugly sides of it. But on a positive note, I think fashion and style are trends. There's so many different words and so many different ways that people think about it. But when I think about fashion, I don't think about designer or the industry. I, excuse me. I like to think about style. So like style, you know, like, like, like someone that has, oh God, um, so, someone that has style, there's this sort of, it, style's like not it's not abiding by like a trend it's it's like who it's like the way that you represent yourself so fashion's i think really important and a, a super wonderful way to express yourself because fashion is the first place where people interact with you so the first interaction that someone has up front about you is going to be on the way you're dressed or how you look. I'm not saying that's okay. I'm just saying that that's the, that's just the truth. You know, what you're wearing influences how people react to you. And so that's why I always tell people like, express yourself through your fashion because I would much rather make a very clean, clear statement from a hundred yards away than have to have somebody come and interact with me to discover who I am. Of course, we're all infinitely more complex than that. I can't be, like, even me. If you saw me in this outfit, you wouldn't understand the other outfits that I've worn on here because you would perceive me as just, like, maybe a cool male dude, um, artistic somebody, but you wouldn't necessarily know that I was also diva, glamorous, 
um, fashion, fashion obsessed um, kind of icon girl. But there, that's why I think style is really important because it style is more about the way that you express your emotions and your identity and your gender and your self view out into the world. Um, I think style is really important to have. I think it's really important, not important, because who cares? Who cares about the way you look in public, honestly? Really, who cares? You do what you want to do, truthfully. But if you want to express yourself through your fashion, it's a really fun opportunity to, um, you know, try different versions of yourself on. Um, when I when I get dressed in the morning, or when, I mean, like when I used to get dressed in the morning, now I get dressed for this because sometimes I'll get dressed to go to like store, but that's that's nothing. Like going to the store is that's okay. I, that's like okay once every two seconds and with a mask on. I'm sorry, but some of my looks are get crunched out by my mask because I like to use the disposable ones. Um, I mean, I have the cloth one, whatever, but. I think what, what I'm saying is that when you get when I get dressed in the morning, I kind of think about like I think about myself like a like a doll. So I'm like, oh, today I'm feeling like okay, today in this outfit I was feeling you know, I was feeling uh, really fun and I was feeling like wearing something kind of different, but um, I was also feeling a little lazy and I was feeling a little relaxed and I've been having kind of a weird type of energy flow recently, so I was just like, okay, I just wanna wear something that's kind of chill. And I don't have to be, um, I don't have to like, I don't have to feel like I'm trying to be anything or like suck it in or anything. I could just kind of be whatever. Um, and it's fine. And it's just a little bit more free in that way. So, but then there are some days where I wake up and I want to be a glamorous doll and I doll myself up and I'm wearing like the jewelry and the dress and the hair and the everything and I'm giving you know titties but today i wasn't really trying to give titties i was trying to just give um chill because i wanted to show that um people are multifaceted and being a gender fluid non-binary post-gender type of person um i'm not always gonna be uh really diva i'm not always gonna be really um, diva, <laughs> you know, uh, there are some days where I want to just be more relaxed and I want to put on dickies and a big shirt and a hat and tie my hair back and that's okay and that's real. That's why when it comes to, that's that and that's one of the things that I wanted to say about the fashion industry is that there's so many rules about like, okay, they, there's like all these things are like, oh, oh my God, Harry Styles in a dress or whatever. It's like, I don't really that didn't mean anything to me because that's not necessarily who they are all the time. You know, I think, um, and that's, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's just, it's a really complex way to see it and to try to discuss it because I find that there's a commoditization of, um, race and, uh, gender expression. But the complicated thing about that is that when you're close to the industry, it is a commoditization. It's them using you to sell something that was previously not sold for you. But the tough thing is that when you get further away from the industry, it actually ends up doubling as like representation. So how do you begin to like process that type of situation where Let's say, like, if, if, like, uh, okay, Tommy Hilfiger. If Tommy Hilfiger all of a sudden started using black and brown models in their campaigns and tried to be more urban, um, oh, didn't 20 years ago they just said that their clothes wasn't for black and brown people and, like, poor people and people who were normal? Didn't they just, isn't that, wasn't, like, a huge scandal? So it's, like... How, how is it that they're going to turn around and do the exact opposite? And I think that um, that's something to be very wary of. I think that the fashion industry can be very toxic. And I think that if you kind of spend, spend too much time there, um, 
and not enough time focusing on just like the artistic aspect of it and the expressive aspect of it if you look at the industry itself it's inherently very toxic you know people suffer a lot i know that i've met designers who um like like the actual costumer sewing person and they're 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 under a lot of stress and they're constantly working and their life kind of revolves around that and i don't think that an artistic industry it's not the same conversation as like the music industry also i don't think that an artistic industry should exploit the artist if it's for if if it comes at the cost of the well-being of the artist i think that's kind of fucked up um and i think it's really fucked up of the fashion industry to do that i also think that it's it sucks that there's there's so much um like the the that that type of funnel neck of the industry also creates a situation where there can't be new designers and new artists like you really have like the competition is like so incredibly fierce because of the way that people consume fashion that um designs get stolen all the time people never get credited for their work i know people who have worked for magazines and gotten paid nothing like nine months later um and i just don't think that that's appropriate and i don't really care for that you know, I'm not going to lie, please, if I got asked to be in some sort of ad or something for some magazine, something somewhere, girl, please, you know that in three seconds I would be waist sucked out, really in a Gucci dress, looking really on camera. But uh, that's because those are, it's like, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a give and take, you know, you sacrifice a little bit of your morals to participate in that kind of a exchange. Um... And that's just is what it is, you know? I'm not saying that, I'm not devaluing anybody's work, but I'm just saying that it is an industry that has taken a really capitalist energy when really fashion has always been and should always be about expressing and being who you are and being free. Um, I don't think it should be reserved for the rich, you know, I think that's actually why I started making clothes was because I felt like I wanted to wear some of the stuff that was on the runway or things that were really exciting and new and designer things that I really enjoyed and was inspired by, but I couldn't afford any of that because obviously I'm not rich, so I didn't have like $9,000 to spend on a pair of underwear. Um, so that's why I started making clothes. Like, even this, um, neat little outfit. It's like, yeah, okay, someone reminded me that it looks like the star from the Red Hot Chili Peppers thing. But, um, this, I, I bought this whole thing at Walmart and painted this on myself. Because I wanted to, you know? And everything I've worn so far on here, I've made to a certain degree. Um, because I think it's important to show people that you can if you like i have the opportunity to hone in on my craft and like make clothes for my body but obviously you know if you can't do that buy stuff but it's just basically to say that there's no you it's not about um what you're wearing as much as it is about how you're wearing it and like who you are inside of it um and that's what i love about fashion is that and style is that it's a place where you can just be and you can express yourself and you can wear something that represents who you are on the outside and bring that hidden person to the forefront rather than like hide them because no matter what what anybody says what you're wearing does reflect to a certain degree who you are and what you choose to identify as and I'm not saying like gender, I'm saying anything. Like if I chose to identify as a scientist, I would wear a lab coat. That's, that's, that's like simple, just like that. You know, it's like, that's the way that we all interact with it. So I think it's important for us to be conscious and to be aware of what we're, what we're digesting, the levels to which we're digesting it to, um, the power that we're giving certain people and what the, just 
to understand the mind game that happens when it comes to consuming the industry. I think that everyone should take a second back, you know, um, understand the cost of what things actually should cost. So yeah, um, if you're buying something that's designer, if it's handmade by someone, of course it's going to be expensive and it's going to be extra expensive because it's designer. But even if you're buying a handmade product from someone who's selling something, let's say on Etsy, it still should be expensive because that person handmade that. Like there has, there, there's, it was like around the 90s, I think, that there was that huge boom in the like factory processing where like child labor started to get exploited really hard in third world countries. I don't even like that phrase, third world countries. In, in non-Western countries. And um, that exploitation and that commoditization, that like made fashion quote unquote accessible. But what it really did was it ended up creating an even larger rift between the industry and then like a local designer. Like I'm pretty sure, I don't, I wasn't alive back then. So like, who am I to say? But I'm pretty sure back then, like if your mom didn't know how to make something, she would go buy the pattern for it and like make it for you. Or like there would be someone in the community that you would go to and they would make your clothes for you. Like I don't, like it really wasn't until like the 80s slash 90s that there was like brands and department stores and people could actually go out and buy like pre-made, pre-measured clothes. Um, And I think that if we all just returned a little bit to that thought process and bought vintage and bought secondhand and bought handmade and did our research about like who in our communities can create the things that we want and how can we begin to customize ourselves to be exactly who we are rather than try to fit to a box that's being sold to us. I think those are ways that we can all begin to consume fashion responsibly and um, have fun with it and really make it something that's not so sinister and turn it around and bring it back to the individual and back to individual expression. Um, that's kind of all I had to say about fashion. I wanted to keep it very light and very simple and very clean. There wasn't much to say and honestly my basement is really cold and it wasn't this cold earlier when I set the lights up so I'm a little crunched. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and move on. (laughs) If you have any questions about that or if you, honestly, I was thinking about putting together a list of um, secondhand vintage um, online sellers, maybe um, designers who make their own jewelry or sell their own things. And if you wanted to be a part of that or included in that, please let me know. And I will um, find a way to link people to something, maybe some bigger thing. Um, but that's just a thought I'm having immediately on camera. So we'll see how that pans out. But if you're interested, let me know. And I will gladly shout you out and bring people to your designs and to your um, store. You know, I think that buying from local people is just really how we should just do it. I think with COVID and everything and the way that everyone's lost jobs, people have honed in on their own creativity. There's so many more other ways to express yourself through other people's, through customized, more unique, like individual, individually focused fashion things. So moving on (laughs) uh, to what's in my purse. Today I brought my, this little acrylic clear thing. I, I'm sorry, but when I saw this, I immediately was like, and like, I, I had to have it. I think I might've even overdrafted my account so I could go and like suck cash out and like whatever and and like float until payday. And just so I could buy this purse because that's how much I wanted it. Um, But I love this bag. I think it's so cute. I love walking. I love, it's, I don't like where necessarily where I got it, but um, I really enjoy the, it's just, it's just, come on. So today in my purse, I brought my glasses. <laughs> I actually wear glasses. I don't have contacts. Um, I've never had LASIK. I've worn glasses since I was in the fifth grade and I literally can't see, like at all. Like I literally cannot see. I'm super nearsighted. So like past here, that's, yeah, like maybe not even a full arm distance away. It's immediately blurry. Um, I can, I can read fine print like a motherfucker, but I can't, I should need my glasses to drive. I, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny 
And I think I brought my glasses because I actually just wanted to laugh about that for a second. I think it's funny that all of my like um, things that I've done, like videos or performances or any of that, I obviously I don't wear my glasses because it, I just, I, I, I enjoy being without them in those situations. But I kind of laugh because people were like, oh, like there's like the, how was it? Or what do you remember about it? And I'm always like, oh, it was a blur. But I don't mean that I don't remember it. I mean that it was literally a blur. Like my life without my glasses is a blur. Um, I've tried contacts and they're too expensive. And I also get, I just like my, I feel like I can't open my eyes wide enough and I just get really like crunch. Um, so I wear glasses, you know, I think it's funny. I'm not gonna always sit here with my glasses on, but I just thought it was, since we're talking about fashion and we're talking about gender and expression or whatever, I just, um, I thought it would be really ironic to come on here and talk about the fact that I don't ever wear my glasses on here and I don't ever wear my glasses really to do with any of my art when it comes to expressing who I am. Um, and I just think that that's really funny because uh, if you if you know me personally, yeah, I'm always wearing my glasses. So it's sort of like talking a little bit about the separation between the art that I make and like the person that I am. Um, my glasses are definitely an aspect to that representation. Um, Burr. Okay, I'm cold. I'm gonna go ahead and sorry. I don't. If this episode's too short, that's my bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off because I want to go put on a jacket and I want to go back upstairs. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to this little snippet, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.